What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie and today I wanted to do a quick video showing you guys an application called Duff. So as I stated in the intro of the video, I want to show you guys an application I found on GitHub called Duff and it's D-U-F. It's actually a alternative to the D-F command. And I was looking through GitHub and I saw this application. I was like, cool, let me go down and show people this actual command because I've done a video on the DF command, but I thought it would be cool to show you guys this application as well. So let's go on and go to the GitHub page so I can show you guys the actual application. Okay, cool. So here is the application. This is the GitHub page. Like I said, I was looking around GitHub and I found this application, but it, it basically is a disusage application. Uh, and as you can see right here on the about, it says disusage free utility, a better DF alternative. So if you guys haven't heard of the DF command, I do have a video that you guys can check out and they'll show you how to actually use the DF command. But here are the files. It's open source. Uh, it's under an MIT license. And one cool thing about it is actually written in the Go language, uh, which is Google's language. So I also have a video showing you guys how to install the Go language. But here we go. This is a screenshot right here of what it actually looks like. And as you can see, it's super cool the way they colorize it, you know, and make and separate everything in the different categories. So this make this application you know super cool to use to actually look at your disk on the system now let's scroll down this talks about the features it basically says user friendly colorful output adjust to your terminal width uh it sorts the results according to your needs uh groups and filter devices and can conveniently output to json and i thought that was dope too you can export it out to json that way you can use it in like a python script or something you can have a python script actually pull from different applications use or different servers or different nodes to pull this information on your network so i thought that was super cool you know that you can output it to json and then you can use those json files to track your disk usage on your system so super cool and if we look right here on the installation portion, it st basically says that you can install it on Orch. It's within the Orch user repository. And you can also install it. They have packages you can install for Alpine, Debian, and they have RPM format packages. So, and then they show you how to actually install them on the other different operating systems out there like Mac OS. You can use Homebrew and then Windows. You can use Scoop which I've never used Scoop before. I don't even know what that is on Windows, uh, but that's super cool. But they have Android, you know, you can put it on your Android system as well. And then right here, it also shows the binaries that you can get and you can install it from source. If you look a little further down right here, you can get clone, you can install it and build it out from source. And then here is the usage, which I'll go through uh, once we actually get it installed. But let's go on and get to the virtual machine so we can go on and install the application. And today I'll be installing it on Zubuntu so you guys can see on a Debian based system how to install it. Here is my virtual machine. Like I stated, this is Zubuntu. And what I'm going to do is download the dev package. Uh, just as because like I typically show you guys how to install stuff from the command line, but I never show you guys how to actually install something using a Dell package, uh, which is it's very simple. Uh, you just have to download the package and then double click on it, especially if you have a desktop and it'll run the package. It'll open up within the package manager, the GUI package manager and install the application so let's go on and go to the github page and what i'm gonna do is just type duff uh and then github and actually it's right there uh and let's click on it right here and then if we go down here where it says packages under linux this is the debian packages as well as alpine and uh, rpm package uh and let's go through and find the uh 
should be one that says Debian or something on it. That's, uh, or we could just look for, yeah, the extension Deb. So that's it right there. That's the ARM package. But what we want is the AMD package. So uh, let's go down and save it. And it'll store it in my downloads directory. Once this thing actually finishes, let's go down and close it. Oh, and yeah, it downloaded, it completed. So let's go down and go to that directory. I'm gonna go down and close the browser and just show you guys how to actually do it. But uh, let's go to our downloads folder and then we can double, double click on that package. And like I said, this is a dev package. I mean the dev package. And so all you have to do is double click on it and it'll open it up. You, you'll see in a second, it'll open up the package manager and install a package for us. And it used to be a whole lot different, you know, back in the day, you used to have to actually open up the command line to install a dev package. But now, you know, it's super simple. Uh, all you gotta do is, you know, like I said, double click on it and this will install that actual package for you. You know, it'll ask for your username, well, your password and go through the process. And that's pretty much it. So let's go down and close that. And then now let's go ahead on and run the command. And let's uh, minimize everything else. And let's zoom in on our terminal, just so you guys can see. And let's just go through some of the basic usage of the Duff command. So let's type D-U-F. Uh, and there is no man page for this command. Uh, so you gotta kinda learn the commands uh, once you or if you need to reference the commands, you can always go back to the GitHub page and it has a detailed description on how to actually use the command. But let's type duff. And as you can see, it works right out the box. You know, no problem. It shows two local drives right here and then two special drives. And these are pretty much temporary file systems, file systems that are created uh, on boot and all that stuff. It's just it's just some file systems. And let me stretch this thing out so we can actually look at it a little better. And let's run it again. And as you can see, it kind of, you know, made it look a little better by uh, keeping the lines together instead of uh, going over on the actual sizes. You know, it spaced out the columns so it'll fit everything in there. And as you can see, we have our root directory, which, you know, it breaks down the size, it breaks down what's used, it breaks down what's available and the use percentage and type and then the actual file system and as you can see the type it could be ext4 or vfat which this is the boot uh drive or boot boot device as you can see that's sda1 and then ext4 is the main root file system where all your data is stored now if you have a complex setup of your drives then it'll you know list it out based on the way you have it set up like you may have your home directory on a different partition you know it'll break all that out but as you can see this looks just like the df command and let me run the df command so you guys can kind of see a comparison right fast so actually let's uh make this a little bigger boom and then let's type df right fast just so you guys can see the difference as you can see it kind of categorizes everything it pulls out the main drives uh, and put those under the local devices and then these are the special devices it just lumps everything else in that category so i thought that was super cool because when you look at it this way it kind of you know it's kind of it kind of can be confusing looking at the drives because you got your root and then down here is your other main device so it can be confusing with all these other you know temp file systems uh there now let me go down and show you guys how to you know list out specific devices so let's say we only want to look at the root device and ignore all those temporary file systems so we could type uh duff and then let's type backslash and it could be whatever so if you have a home directory that's on a different you know partition or a different device then you can actually type home you know what i'm saying you could type the basically the mount point uh and that'll allow you to just capture that one device now let me run it on root so you guys can see and as you can see you know uh the root directory it just pulled that one line out uh it didn't pull the boot it didn't pull you know anything else but the root 
so let's uh run it again because you can you can actually uh run it against multiple devices so let's say we want to look at the roots and then let's say we always also want to look at that boot device what was it boots uh forward slash efi and let's press enter and as you can see it pulls in both of those you know devices so and you can see their mount points you know and all that information we've shown up top so you can you know pull out just what you want to see within the export now one thing about it uh when you run the df command or duf command you know it'll have duplicates it'll have sudo uh and inaccessible you know file systems if you want to see those as well because they're not listed if you want to see those as well then you could type dash dash all and this will include all devices on the system so let's run duff and then let's go dash dash all and press enter as you can see you know it pulls up pseudo stuff um all types of like special devices that are used by the file system um and so i just wanted to show you guys how to actually do that you can pull up you know it has f use device um and then and this is file system foods uh connections i've seen this before that's a device you know so to speak on the system so uh, it'll pull everything that's not included in the normal duf command so let's type duff again just to show you the difference you know what i'm saying it pulls in pretty much everything that it you don't see here you know along with what's already there or what's already being pulled now let me show you something else as you can see they have you know the different file systems it pulls in the different file system types uh you can actually hide or show different file system types by the actual file system name so let me show you guys this right fast uh and this is something you may need to kind of exclude certain things so let's say you only want to see vfat well let's go down and type that in so the command is duf and then it's an option is dash dash only dash file system that's basically what it means so only dash file system and let's only look at vfat and press enter as you can see it pulls the only vfat that's there and if you look up here you'll see that that's the only one that's vfat now let's say we only want to let's say we want to look at different ones or let's say we want to look at more than one then you can actually put more than one here by just typing a comma and then type the other file system you want to see it so let's look at that temporary file systems uh so t m p f s and press enter boom and it pulls everything that you requested so it has the vfat file system type and then the temporary file system types and it pulls all those in for you you know what i'm saying so that's a cool way to do it and let's say you want to look at the opposite let's say you don't want to see those file systems well there is an option and it's basically instead of only you just type hide so dash dash hide dash file system and then let's say we want to hide those vfats and temporary file systems as well press enter and you won't see those file system types now there are other options that i can show you like for instance you can look at specific columns uh within each one of these areas that it pulls in so let's say you only want to look at mounted and sized and used uh in the file system type uh then or the file system which is the location where it's located then you can pull in just those you know columns by using other options but I won't go through those right fast. Uh, you can check out the documentation for the Duff command. You know what I'm saying? And, and just see how to actually do that. But it is one more that I wanted to show you guys. And that's actually outputting this stuff to a JSON file. So let's say you want to output it to JSON. First, let's go down and clear right fast. So clear the screen. And let's type Duff uh, dash dash JSON and press enter and it'll output to a json format and you can obviously you know push that output to a file so let's say we want to push it to a file in my home directory let's name it uh let's name it uh duff uh dot output and press enter and it outputs that stuff to that 
location now let's go down there uh, I'm gonna just cat out that file right fast so you guys can see and it's within my home directory so I can just type the output press enter and as you can see you know that's the output in the JSON format but I thought that was super cool you know what I'm saying everybody is trying to get in a program learn Python you know and different programming languages well JSON is a good format to put things in so you can actually use it for either reports or whatever and let's say you want to you know track your file space or whatever on your different devices then you can output it to a json file you know and put it on a cron job or something like that uh using this command so i thought that was super cool to show you guys but i hope you guys enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe to the channel if you have any questions leave comments down in the comment boxes below and of course keep it tech.